Okay, uh, good evening everyone, thanks for coming out. Um, so yeah, just a quick introduction of my work. Um, I started uh, taking photographs as sort of a vacation piece and it developed from there. Um, I kind of, uh, I went on, a, on a, a trip to China and I started taking photos on that, on that trip and um, thought I would come back and, and study photography, but I saw what was happening to a lot of my friends and they weren't enjoying uh, photography school, so I decided to go study film. Um, I just wanted that, that duality, I think, of, of having the two, uh, the two skills. So I completed my uh, degree at AFTA um, in cinematography. I then uh, left AFTA and uh, have now been working for two and a half years as a professional photographer, as it were. Um, so yeah, today I'll be kind of showing you some of the work that I've shot over the last four months of travels. Um, some fashion stuff as well, just to kind of show the commercial aspect of, of my work. So in terms of approach, I have quite a simple approach. Uh, for, for example, I actually haven't ever been in the studio in my life. Everyone's kind of flabbergasted when they hear that. I like being outside. I've, as I said, it's, it's kind of a candid approach that I take. Um, so yeah. I, I like exploring, that's I think why travel has been so, so intricate or such an important part of my, of my experience in, in terms of the images I've, I've captured. So yeah, this, this year has been kind of a, a learning curve for me. Um, it started off this with, a, with a sort of heavy documentary project and I was then grappling with an idea of kind of staying in Cape Town the whole year and kind of bunkering down and trying to make the commercial thing sort of happen. And I got an, a really amazing opportunity to go to Yale University to exhibit some work there, um, which was once in a lifetime. And uh, so I grabbed the opportunity and I used that as sort of a, a platform to firstly get in with a sort of more gallery orientated work. And then uh, I then, Moved over to New York and um, went and did meetings there. Got to meet some amazing people. Got to see some some great agencies, great clients. Um, I did some shoots there. So the overall experience of that, I think, was extremely beneficial um, to a point that I don't think I would have been able to achieve something like that back in Cape Town. Um, I then decided to go and do a surf trip and. Uh, a month in Sumatra, so it went from surfing. I was also back to the like back to the roots of my photography, and um, and then I had two weeks on the mainland where we weren't surfing, and I got to go up volcanoes. And for me, that was something that I really needed for my photography because I think my work is driven by the diversity of the subject matter. Um, some people stick to to one sort of aesthetic or one sort of style or one sort of subject matter. And I often get asked, especially at, at family functions, like by my uncle, and he's like, so what do you take photos of? I take photos of whatever sort of comes my way. It's just kind of an aesthetic approach that I've chosen. Um, so yeah, and then I went onward and to China um, to see my brother. I used to live there in, in, in 2010 when the, rugby, uh, when the Soccer World Cup was on. So it was also one of those sort of humbling moments of going back to where the photography started. Um, I got to take some really amazing images and just to see where I've come from and the progression and how I approach things in the subject matter was, was extremely interesting. Um, and now I'm back here. Um, I just went to Ethiopia now and also I think what pl plays a massive part of my photography is the fact that I am lucky enough to explore Africa and I think that's something that's vitally important for all of us to because it is such a such a crazy place in, ma in, in many ways but uh, it has a lot to offer and I think we sit in Cape Town and we we conjure up these ideas of Africa but until you go out there and actually photograph it or just go and experience it um, we don't actually really know what's out there. So yeah, so that was my, my, my year of learning. Um, but not to bore you, let's, let's show you some of my work um, and I'll kind of go through it and then 
I'll show you some, some mood boards that are kind of the basis of my new uh, website. Um, and you'll just kind of get an idea of how I mix and match images and how almost collage in the way I present my work plays a big part in how people um, kind of uh, consume it, as it were. OK, so this is the opening image. Um, I was lucky enough to walk past this in, uh, in New York in a place called Coney Island. Um, I thought it was completely bizarre. This, this gentleman was a, a street performer doing a kid's birthday. And what he did was he used to dye his pigeons various colors. So they kind of looked like candy floss, blues, pinks, yellows with, uh, with food dye. And I managed to luckily snap this pigeon with its, with its wingspan out like that. So I look. I live for these sort of shots. Um, you can't set something that, like this up. It, it, it just doesn't work for me, so yeah. So yeah, this is uh, one of the pages from my new site. As you can see, it, uh, it goes from studio portraits to uh, images from my trip to the US last year, um, to scenes from the crew where whitewash is spilled from the, from the streets, uh, and then sort of high fashion, as it were. So yeah, and I think that's, that's what keeps me excited, is just mixing and matching images and seeing how they all work together, because I never really like presenting one large image. It's very sort of an old school approach for me, so yeah. This image was taken uh, while I was on the most crazy, insane hike of my life. I left at uh, 8.30 at night with so-called experienced guides. And uh, we walked through a, what's, what seemed to be a mudslide for 14 hours. And we got to the top of this volcano that smelled like rotten eggs. And we enjoyed it for about 45 minutes and then had to make our way down. And on the way down, we found this, this young lady, and uh, we look like we're just playing a rugby match or something, and she looks like she's uh, stepped out of heaven or something. She, she was just living the dream. She was obviously uh, a lot fitter than we were and had some experience with this sort of thing. Uh, I think this was a, a product of our craziness on, on the top of the volcano. Um, I also like to play with with various shapes and forms in my, in my stuff. Um, some of it's candid, some of it's somewhat contrived. I kind of try and make it this way. So yeah, it's playing with colors. I actually made my buddy Rob put on that glove, just yeah, mixing and matching, seeing what happens, and yeah. So yeah, this is another one of these spreads that, I, that, I, that are going to be a part of my website. Um, I also recently did a really fascinating trip to Kenya. Um, it was for Bloomberg Business Week, so I was under the impression that I would have to go shoot some, some really sort of stale stuff, but the brief was really, really chilled, so I got to shoot Maasai Warriors, as you can see um, on the left there, um, and I got to explore some of these great plains that not a lot of people get to see. So some of the content I got there was once in a lifetime sort of stuff. And it was a, it was a crazy trip. I was only there for three days. And I had to f do some crazy flights. But in the end, it's, it's all worth it in terms of the stuff I got to experience and what I, what to, what I got to capture. I think landscapes play also a massive part of my play a massive part of my my imagery. Um, once again, because I like to be outside, I like I'm always looking for locations because I do shoot fashion, so I I'm always looking for fashion locations. So like in that process, you come across um, various spots like this. This wasn't in Cape Town, and this had nothing to do with fashion. This was uh, for a client of mine, but also. My job has allowed me to go into sort of restricted spots. This was in a, in a sort of really high security mine. And also the, just to see how humans interact with nature and how we go about conserving this planet and 
obviously that's a very relevant topic at the moment, but um, you get to see this firsthand and see how how sort of deluded we are at the at how we interact. So yeah, it was very eye-opening seeing this. It's another one of these shots. I really like this just because of the shape and form and the colors and you get a sort of perspective of the of the landscape behind the untouched earth and then this sort of volcanic looking deposit from the mine. Once again, another another spread of mine, um, mixing fashion with, with everyday uh, work. Um, I did a two-month trip around the US last year, driving around in a, a van that I bought. And um, I think being able to do that, I, I would recommend everyone does that at least once in life. Just get in, get in a car. If, you, if you're into photography, go and do it. Be by yourself. Don't go on Facebook. Don't do any of that. Just go and shoot and kind of, it really refines your style because you start becoming intuitive in, in terms of what you want to shoot and not what you've maybe seen on Facebook and subconsciously then con like it just comes out of nowhere without you even knowing. There it's like it's a purity thing so I was really lucky in, in that regard to go and do this and um, some of the shots I got were, were really great. I think also in terms of the, 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 the walk around, around idea of uh, photography, um, it allows you to come across things like these, like frames like this. Um, a lot of people might not find this interesting. I, I find little details like this of sort of everyday life, how we try to bring these details into our lives of, of comfort and so on and so forth. And the little American flag and how this plant seems like it's squashed up against the glass, like it's trying to escape, it's quite interesting. And then you have the, the shadows of the trees, of like sort of the free world as it were. So yeah, it's, images like this really excite me. Um, they're not National Geographic shots, I know that much, but they, I hope they say something. So once again, another spread. Um, in terms of my fashion work, I try and approach it in a, in a slightly more organic way, I suppose, because I, I don't shoot it a lot. So when I do, it's, it is about sort of creating like, sort of a, a statue approach, sculptural approach, trying to bring different art elements in, um, shadows and that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, this, this shoot here was um, for an online feature for Vogue Italy and they gave us free reign, which was amazing. And it was, it's really great to, to showcase local designers and local models on such a, such a great platform. So that was really great. Um, and yeah, then like small, small, small things like the Coney Island snake that you see on the bottom there. Um, this girl with the, with the rainbow um, jersey and the Bible, which I found actually while I was in Kenya on, a, on that same trip. The only, the only day of sort of rain and mist I was lucky enough to kind of experience. They haven't had it for like eight months or something. So if you go out there, and I think that's the, the message I kind of always, I'm like a stuck record. It's, I don't want to talk about cameras. I don't want to talk about who's got this, who's got that. Uh, I want to be out there shooting. If you're going to shoot on your cell phone, if you're going to shoot mm -hmm. digital film, whatever, as long as you're doing it in a way that's got integrity, I think it's, um, the results will kind of show. And I hope that, uh, I think we're all grappling. I was going to discuss insecurities today, but uh, might have got a bit too deep. But I think we're all grappling with our own work. Um, so yeah, as long as you're doing it with sort of some sort of honesty, I think it's, quite valid. Once again, one of those frames and that I just found interesting, the, the interaction between nature and, and, um, and humans, just also the strange forms and it, it almost kind of 
takes on an abstract quality. Another thing that I'm really fascinated with is, uh, and what I've experienced a lot being in China and, and parts of uh, Southeast Asia is the strange influence that the Western world has had on, on Eastern culture and often how there's lost interpretations. So this, this image was taken in an extremely remote area of West Sumatra and um, this looks like it's like a boy racer car that you would see, I don't know, I don't know where you'd see it, but it, it just was so f far out from me and so out of place that um, I wonder where that culture comes from and where it stems from. Um, I'd love to do sort of a six month project kind of exploring that in terms of how, and it happens in Africa, you see it as well in terms of soccer teams and, and motor racing and the sort of messy culture as it were, like, those, those jerseys are all over Africa and it's, it's just strange how Western culture is just bombarding the whole world with this, this message. So yeah, I've, I'm, I'm fascinated by, by images like this. So yeah, I, um, I'm not adverse completely to studio work. Um, it is quite nice sometimes just kind of messing around with lights and uh, seeing what, what comes of it. Um, this bottom picture here, I was lucky enough to photograph a whole bunch of female um, musicians from South Africa. Um, so yeah, and as you can see there, it's also kind of just trying to work with different poses and then also then just using simplicity to show off people's features and that sort of thing. Um, what else can I? And then I've also, so this, this image here of the flare, I've uh, been lucky enough to work with a lot of uh, musicians in South Africa, and I think what has stood me in such good stead in terms of my progression as a photographer is um, having buddies within the industry. So like the collective tonight have got me here, and uh, I've had various friends that have brought me on for projects, gone on tours, been able to travel to Malawi to go and just be on a, on a music tour. And I think for me, jumping at those is extremely important because obviously then again, you get content, you get to meet these amazing people, and the industry can kind of, we need to all grow from that, like all grow at the same time because yeah, it's, as we all know, it's quite, it's quite hard out here, especially if you're trying to create content that isn't necessarily completely fine-tuned and, and glossy, so yeah. More of my America trip recently. Um, I think I'm addicted to the color red, so it plays a massive part of in my, in my imagery. Um, yeah, and I found this also fascinating. Uh, just also, once again, just more exploration. So yeah, this is also, I, I seem to fall into this trap of shooting mines a lot. This was also, once again, I was uh, flabbergasted about this sort of, in the most pristine area, just outside Seattle, how they're just digging up the sort of hills in the middle of nowhere and creating these these landscapes that, that seem somewhat surreal. And then they don't, yeah, there's not often a, a rehabilitation sort of process that happens, so. But it, it has its own beauty, which is, which is also quite, uh, quite sickening in a way because it, it does suck you in and it, it does offer some really, really great uh, images. At the beginning of the year, um, I went up the west coast um, because there are all these abandoned towns up there that uh, were part of the, the mining industry. And uh, that image on the left there with the, the bird that looks like it's suspended, it's actually in a, in a public pool that's now, now been abandoned. And I shoot some documentary work and I did it. That story was for Vice. And, um, it's really interesting to be to be able to give in, like to give in that platform and to be able to just kind of run with it is 
is extremely fascinating. And for me, working with a writer and, and going in and meeting these people and discussing the heyday of, of these towns and how people are holding on to false hopes is also something that I think really resonates with me in terms of firstly you're getting amazing images but you're also getting stories that are properly linked to this and you're building a, a cohesive cohesive story that people can actually read like a book and I, I hope it, it kind of did that um, you can see that online so if you want to go check out the full story it's, it's up there um, this image in the center is um, some of the work I did for the Yale project that I did and um, it was based around technology and, and how we as humans are slowly accessing art more and more through technology instead of actually going to galleries or actually seeing it in the, in the physical and a lot of people are against that and um, it's a whole purity thing and um, what we fail to remember is that not everyone has that ability to come and afford to go to galleries and so on and so forth. So I did a story on how mobile technology is developing in, within townships and within the greater Cape Town area and how a Chinese influence actually is allowing people to afford um, technologies such as tablets, cell phones, um, affordable laptops. And now our, it's opening doors to a massive sort of media hub of, of new content. And I think that, that pairing is going to now, I think in the next 15 years, going to create some amazing art out of, um, out of South Africa and I think in the whole of Africa because the, cl the climate of Africa allows for a completely different interaction in terms of social climate allows for a completely different action, um, interaction with uh, technology. So it's going to be interesting to see, and I think that's just kind of the starting point of, of where that's all going. So this is more from West Sumatra. This is just also just a, an occurrence. S some more mining work, um, and just bringing in sort of a sort of photorealism it felt like a painting when I photographed it, so I played with the shadows and also just like that, yeah, that, that surreal quality about it. If I'm not mistaken, this is my last slide. So um, top left is also more of the, the Yale work. Um, this, middle, this middle fashion stuff is for a local designer, Rich Nissi. Um, and once again, I try to just play with, uh, with different poses and different, and, and different ways of sort of seeing garments. Um, yeah, and, and not necessarily make it about the model, make it more about actual, uh, the actual craftsmanship and, and uh, how people... Because uh, we, have, we have a really, really sort of, sort of sophisticated fashion industry that's, that's really blooming at the moment. And um, there are lots of guys shooting some great stuff. And, there's people making amazing garments, and if shot properly, um, it's really on a, on a world standard, I believe. And yeah, we we create our own stories at the moment in terms of um, of how we portray it, and sometimes we get it wrong, and sometimes we get it very right. So yeah, um, yeah, that's that's about it. Um, thanks for coming out, guys. Thanks for taking the time to listen to me. I just want to say thanks to the collective. Um, for having me and I just want to say congratulations to Carl for the Magnum Award. So yeah. Thanks. So you did. Thanks so much. Um, you guys, those that applied for tickets could ask questions online as well if you guys would like to ask some questions. We have ten minutes to kill. Um, anyone have some questions for Kent? Otherwise, I'll have to go and get my list at the back and we can do it like that. <laughs> cool. Uh, I know you said that... Sorry. It was almost like you were alluding to... Oh. Oh, hi. Uh, it was almost like you were alluding to the fact that um, cameras weren't important to you, like as if shooting on film or digital or iPhone but what do you shoot on? Because I love your photography and it, it looks like film at times, yeah, yeah. but it could 
be uh, what you're doing great grading wise um, but, but what's your process in that regard I so I am I say I say that um, I have no issue with other people shooting what they I, I choose to shoot film um, so for me I think the biggest thing for me is exposing properly which a lot of people fail to do and then complain about labs and then good scanning so yeah that's my process is really really sorry this light's kidding me um, really kind of making sure the scans are done at a quality that I feel is up to standard exposing properly and then yeah so I use a variety of different medium format cameras so I, I use a Mamiya 7 and a RB67 and then yeah I've, I've shot there's a bit of 35 mil on here that was on a Contax G2 I use a and then there's some flash stuff with that G2 and the Mamiya 7 but these some of these if I quickly just uh, the mining work I'll show you this this stuff's digital um, this is very rare though this is like the first time I've shot digital in four months five maybe even longer so it's all it's all up to clients the job if I'm yeah if it's personal work or whatever so whatever works yeah cool cool anyone else another question you all want burritos cool Cal How's it going? Um, sorry, you just say that depicting images sort of like you have up there feels a little bit old school. Uh, why do you decide to lay your images out in spreads? Is it because of the images interacting with one another or what is your reasoning behind that? Um, may, I don't know. I think it's maybe a rejection of sort of like the standard portfolio, like go there, like here's one image, one image, one image. It just I don't really enjoy it. Um, as I said, I think because I don't shoot strictly one thing, it doesn't it doesn't need to be put into categories or anything. So I'm trying to sell the the aesthetic as an entirety instead of single images um, because single images don't necessarily excite me as much. So I think. Also because you can go see my portfolio on other platforms and um, and my yeah on other sites. So for me to be able to show my work in a way that I feel says most about how I want potential galleries, uh, photo editors, so on and so forth to see it, I've I've kind of taken that approach just because I I like how it looks. So hopefully other people will. Anyone else? Cool. Uh, hi. Um, bit of a personal question. Uh, a lot of your images seem to take place very internationally. Uh, you seem like a very well-traveled person. Um, I want to know, are these trips you take self-financed or are they given to you by opportunities? Are they afforded by uh, like external opportunities to get to these places? Um, it does, it varies, so what I try to do and what I try, um, I try get a job, so for example if I went to the States, I'll try and line up some jobs to kind of fund the trip when I get there. Um, the issue with that is a lot of clients then pay, pay three months in advance, so it doesn't really help anyway, but um, it's just, I, I don't know, you've got to just sort of make it work for yourself. So. I do do jobs that I don't tell anyone about and it's kind of just for the cash. Um, but a, quite a few of these jobs, so Kenya, um, Ethiopia, um, I went to Morocco, those are for clients. So it's a mixture of two and if I go on a personal trip, I then try and either get blogs involved in terms of just featuring that work when I get back or yeah. So. I always try and make it a work trip, as it were, so at least you're getting something out of it. So, yeah. But it's definitely about saving cash and then, or just buying the ticket and going, and when you get there, kind of make it work and see what happens. So, yeah. Cool. Any other questions? No. Oh, Luca. Hello. 
Um, I just wanted to chat about representation in terms of agency from a creative agency versus yourself. How much do you take into your own hands? Um, do you rely fully on an agency to seek out possible connections, contacts, people to collaborate with? Or do you take that into your own hands? And if so, what is the process of interacting, presenting your work, presenting yourself? Thank uh, you. And thank you for nice photos. I'm disappointed, Luca. You said you're going to grill me. Um, my agency is great. So I have two agencies, uh, one's abroad and, and one's here. Um, I think what I've learned, and especially with my work, is that it is, on a commercial sort of standpoint, it's quite hard to sell. Um, so I think to expect my agency to go out there and constantly sell my stuff would be uh, quite irresponsible from, from my side. So what I, what I have done is taken the jobs they've, they've offered to me because um, they gave me some really great stuff and it's, it's always slick and it's, and it's always well sort of managed. Um, but then you've got to just you know, chase, chase the own jobs and, and send people emails and go do the meetings. So yeah, buy the ticket and, and go to the, those photo hubs. Not to say that this isn't a photo hub, but if you want to be making foreign currency and and traveling, like I've been lucky enough to do, it's, it does help when you're earning dollars or, or rand, I mean, or euros. So, yeah, my approach was always just kind of being somewhat fearless and sending emails. Just send it out. It's, yeah, lines in the water. Um, so, yeah, and if I just sat back and let my representation try to get me jobs, I'd be surfing every day, which I kind of do anyway, but uh, that's beside the point. You have to, yeah, you do have to chase it, because um, you, you own biggest, biggest fan and your worst enemy, so if you're willing to go, go like hat in hand and go to the photo editors and be like, this is what I can do for you, and you, you can, only you can sell yourself like that, trying to get someone to kind of get that emotion and st across, it's just, it's, it's hard. So yeah, you gotta just go out there and knock on doors, as it were. Does that answer the question? Cool, anyone else? No. Okay, cool. Oh, nice, every time, yeah. Um, okay, this is a very straightforward question, but it's not that often that I get to speak to somebody who was at AFTA and as an aspiring cinematographer who is studying at AFTA, how did your degree, did your degree help you in becoming who you are today? Would you say that that did play a fundamental aspect to your work or like would you say that it wasn't as influential as... I'm, I'm probably the worst person to ask about this because I, I, I don't have much much nice things to say about AFTA in terms of, <laughs> of, of as an institute how it's run, but I'm not gonna get into that. But um, yeah, it was good. I think uh, the, the basis of, I think, what helped, the, helped my growth is not actually the, the place. I was lucky enough to be in a class with some cool guys that, and girls that are making great stuff now. So I think that maybe influenced what I do more than the actual place, because let's be honest, you don't really learn that much there. It's, it's kind of like a holiday camp. Or at least when I was there, anyway. Cool, uh, another question over here. Um, I, I'd never want to ask you know, how you replicate your style, but what I do like to know is what, what is going through your head when you're looking to take a photo? Um, what is it that makes you feel like this is an opportunity to get a shot that I want? Um, I don't think it's like a thought process. It's uh, it's kind of like I don't know, like maybe like sneezing or something like that. It's I know what I enjoy. I think it's like a subconscious thing that that slowly develops. Um, that trip in the states, I think, developed that. It's more like a. What works works, and what doesn't doesn't. So yeah, I don't know. There's no, I, I can't put, I can't place it in words. It's, uh, I don't know. It's like when you see a puppy and you get that excitement. It's that same sort of, I don't know, something like that. It's one of those sort of feelings, like a, I don't know. Yeah, it's like a strange feeling. Anyways. 
Uh, how much of your selection process is when you're composing a frame and how much of it is when you're sort of selecting your images afterwards? Sorry, say that again? So, so how much of your process is when you're composing the frame and selecting what to shoot yeah. as opposed to what images to select afterwards once you've shot? I'm trying to understand this. <laughs> um, Sorry, maybe I've drunk too much wine. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's partly light and part... Um, my whole process is kind of off the, it's, I don't know, it's like stand-up con comedy. I don't know, it's just, I, I, sh I don't know how I would explain the whole process. Um, I don't, so for example, I don't shoot multiple exposures or I never shoot a subject more than once. So um, it either works or it doesn't. So the composition happens in a split second. I, I don't try overthink things. I see something, I assess it, I get the puppy feeling, or I, hope I get the puppy feeling, then I assess it, shoot it, and then it's either good or it's not good, sort of thing. And I'm quite brutal in terms of the selection of the image then, because, yeah. So, since you follow up on that, then you just shoot that volcano from five different angles, right? You just explore that and felt something and shot it. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I don't, yeah, I don't shoot. Yeah. I don't, s it's, it's just not something I enjoy. I, I, I'm not saying that I'll walk around a volcano and shoot it once, okay. but I won't see like a rock and shoot it like, maybe from different angles, but I won't like, it, it's, it, it's just something I don't enjoy, so yeah. Yeah. 